I am uh, here to talk about space chain, blockchain in space. So that's uh, some pretty exciting stuff. Uh, I'm sure that uh, this, uh, this conference has been full of uh, talks about financial services and tokens and venture capital uh, distribution models. Uh, that that all you know that's interesting for uh, you know folks in uh, Shanghai or New York. But what about the rest of us? Let's talk about space. Let's talk about something cool. Uh, so, thank you, thank you. So, space chain is very simply, and let's make sure that this works. Dun da da da. Can someone give me a drum roll, please? All right, the drum roll worked. Very good. Uh, space Chain is a private space agency. It's a nonprofit Singapore foundation for the public good. We are a publicly listed, because our space cash token is traded, SPC. We are a publicly listed nonprofit foundation. Is that not a mind bender? That in and of itself would not have been possible without tokens and the current environment that we're in. It's, uh, it's simply amazing. And so we, are, we have ultimately an amazing amount of flexibility to do what we do, and I'm about to uh, tell you what we do. But uh, very quickly, I think that the sum is the world's first private space agency. I might need another drum roll. <laughs> All right. Okay, so uh, the Space Chain story is really uh, my co-founder, Z. Uh, he kicked off Space Chain with some games of ping pong uh, right here in California at Draper University. Z attended Draper University. And uh, Z was very, very competitive in ping pong. And uh, that's uh, Z on the left. And uh, that's Gabriel, another attendee of Draper University on the right. And they attended, uh, they were very, very competitive. They, they uh, you know, ping ponged every day at the ping pong table. But what was the, uh, the ultimate, I might need another drum roll here, come on. Oh, there we go. Hello. Hello, technical. There we go. So uh, we have Z and Gabriel are very, very competitive, but uh, Z's a little bit better at ping pong. And so he keeps beating Gabriel. This is kind of frustrating. Uh, it's not as much fun. So what if we change the rules of the game? Z proposed that we keep the ball on the ping pong table as long as we can. We're not trying to just smash the ball and make a point. We're trying to keep it going, trying to collaborate. And if you make a different prerequisite, a different condition, a different purpose, it changes the game. It's a totally different game once you started to play collaboratively like Z did in this game here. So what if the underlying principle all along is to play along? What if we make similar changes to the business world? OFO. OFO is a company in China that has over 10 million of these yellow bikes. If you go to Beijing, uh, other uh, cities in China, you will see these bikes all over the place. Uh, like the, the numbers say, 20, uh, 20 countries, uh, 65 million AUM, uh, $3 billion valuation. Now, what is the key to their model? The key to their model, blockchains and trust. It's the biggest sharing economy company. Do you want to use those bikes? You can use it for free, but you have to pay a $60 deposit to actually use their bikes. And so point being, if you change the trust model, you change the entire ecosystem. You change and invent new business models. You change the business. So what are the underlying principles? How is trust built? What are the prerequisites, conditions, and purposes necessary for people to collaborate 
and sort of have the whole greater than the sum of the parts? What changes can be made? Consensus, another blockchain principle, is in the early 50s and 60s, John F. Kennedy, US president, uh, there were a lot of people saying, you know, we could do this in space, we could do this in space, we could do this in space. What Kennedy did, the Kennedy consensus is, he said, we're going here. And that arranged everyone else's efforts around, we're going to the moon. You know, we don't have to make any of these other decisions. We're going to the moon. And so we're going to focus all our efforts on building rockets, building space capsules, uh, building around this central decision, this central goal. We're going to the moon. We choose to go to the moon. And they did. So why Space Chain? We want to create a problem-solving model for tackling the future's greatest challenges. And this is why we're not a company. We're not a, uh, we're going to build a satellite and do this. We're not going to go and build a widget. We have the capability to get funding and sponsor many projects to create a problem-solving model to tackle the future's greatest challenges. So that's what Space Chain is all about, creating new economic models using tokens to advance space, to advance commercialization of space, to push humanity out into the solar system. So what do we have? We have four key points is we are uniting people around a common interest point, the, the Kennedy consensus. We have a global value transmitting vehicle, that's the Space Cash Token and the Singapore Foundation. We have a community drive initiative to build community. And then ultimately, we're lowering barriers to participating in space. Those are the four principles that Space Chain is funding projects based on, sponsoring projects based on, investing in companies based on these four key principles. We have the Space Cash token. It's currently publicly listed, as mentioned. Um, we've been very, very successful in uh, our uh, private sale. So uh, we've uh, currently raised over $80 million specifically for uh, our, uh, our, our foundation and the projects that we're going to sponsor. Um, it's one of the uh, most widely held uh, quantum tokens. It's one of the most widely traded quantum tokens. So in uh, the few days that it's been public, it is uh, quickly uh, sort of shot to the top there. So what are some of the projects? I mentioned that we're a nonprofit foundation. We're not a company. And we're, we don't just do one thing. We're a little bit like a VC fund except we don't have to chase a profit. We don't have to chase a specific 10% return, 20% return, 20x return. We can pick and choose whether we want to sponsor or donate or invest. That's the flexibility that uh, Space Chain has. So we have a number of projects that we're already sponsoring, the very first of which literally launches to space in about seven days. So we're launching two satellites on the uh, Chinese Longshan rocket up into space. And that's essentially going to do what you see in the picture here. And that's me in a, a partial bunny suit uh, with the satellite that's launching in seven days is a CubeSat or a nano satellite. And this has blockchain software on board. And why is that interesting? Previously, satellites up in space, they're single owner, and say uh, they're, they're broadcasting 100 TV channels, you have to go to that single satellite owner and you have to write them a check and you rent one or two of those TV channels, but it's the satellite owner that owns, controls the satellite. It's the satellite owner that runs that software. What if you could allow anyone to upload their app onto a satellite, just like you can upload an app onto a smartphone? The satellite becomes an app platform. For the first time, you have multiple tenants, a multi-tenant satellite. And the thing that makes that possible is the blockchain software. Blockchain is incredibly secure software. And 
we use that to provide what's called an application sandbox. We sandbox one application away from another so that one application, it might be malfunctioning, it might be using way too much resources. That will not impact any other application on the satellite. So blockchain software and cryptography gives us something that the satellite industry as a whole has not done ever before is make that satellite an app platform where you're actually running the code, your code, your software on the satellite. It's not a bounce up and then bounce down repeater type situation. The satellite itself can hold keys, it can buy things over the blockchain, it can store data, it can process any number of uh, uh, applications, ultimately a data center in space. That's one of several projects that Space Chain is uh, sponsoring. The second is uh, an operating system that's specifically uh, for spacecraft and satellites. This is uh, fully open source. This is already on GitHub. And this is a satellite that right now, or excuse me, a piece of software that right now uh, powers uh, missiles and submarines and a lot of sort of uh, hard hardware types of applications. That's what's needed for space. And so we're partnering with uh, the, uh, the producers of the Silix open source OS to produce a spacecraft operating system. Again, open principles, blockchain principles, everything is transparent, everything is open source. Another project is volunteer computing for research. This is building distributed networks whereby many people contribute a tiny slice of computing power, much like a mining pool if you're familiar with that, or SETI at home, or distributed.net if you're familiar with those, or BOINC. All of these are distributed computing, collaborative computing, and that's uh, another project that we're sponsoring. The ARCH mission, this is a digital seed vault sending information on uh, just about every rocket that we can put information on. What, is, what would you like to save in terms of art, culture, language, the best books, the best movies? If there was a, uh, an asteroid headed towards Earth, what would you put in a hard drive, in a flash drive, and put it on a spacecraft to save? That's what the ARCH mission is. It's all of Wikipedia in every language and more. And uh, we've just, uh, uh, ARCH mission has just struck a deal with uh, Elon over at SpaceX. The Falcon Heavy launch, which is uh, any week now, a week or two weeks away, that's going to include one of the uh, ARCH mission databases in it. And so SpaceX and Elon Musk are already on board. Mini Hubble. Another project that uh, Space Chain is uh, sponsoring is essentially, and this would not have been possible without tokens and tokenomics, is a tiny spacecraft where you can rent time on it to use the space telescope for whatever you need. And so no longer are space telescopes only the purview of large governments and large universities this is bringing space to everyone, and that's very much part of the principles of Space Chain. So some of our team, that's uh, our uh, co-founder and CEO, Z. Um, he is uh, just an amazing driving force. Um, me, I'm co-founder and CTO. I am a former blockchain developer. I'm a business builder, very, very technical, former Linux kernel engineer for well over a decade. Uh, we have uh, Tim Draper, who was a, a speaker here. He's out in the valley, um, very well known. Uh, also in the space industry, Jeffrey Manber, the CEO of NanoRacks. They launched satellites off of the International Space Station. He's a core space advisor. Of course, uh, Patrick Aquanum and uh, uh, the uh, SoftBank Asia Infrastructure Fund. And then uh, Matt Rozak, very well known in the blockchain industry. And those are all our current partners. As, as you can see, it is uh, a very large list. It's, uh, there are a lot of Chinese firms as this uh, originated uh, out of China. 
So uh, it's a, a Chinese science team for the most part, Chinese rocket, and uh, you know we're working with the the China Academy of Sciences and the Chinese NASA, et cetera. So thank you very much for your time. That's a quick introduction to Space Chain. If you have any questions, if you have a project uh, that you would like to submit a proposal for sponsoring, feel free to uh, email myself or Z at those email addresses. Thank you very much for your time.